Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a wrap up video. I wanted to do one of these right now because I keep pushing them way back and way back and I keep like procrastinating them and then I get like 15 to 20 books and I'm like I can't do them all in one video. So I want to try to do these a little bit more regularly so I'm not like building up such a stack of books that I need to wrap up and talk about them just more often. So okay so the first book that I read since my last video was The Cryptid Club by Sarah Anderson. This is like a little graphic novel and it's like it was really cute. It's about like monsters and like all of the you know mythical monsters and lore that we have like you know Bigfoot and things like that and it's these little comic strips about these monsters like communicating with each other and like hanging out with each other and just like dealing with the world and like doing worldly things you know just like going about their business and like what funny little things that these monsters like aliens and things like that are like getting up to while we're just kind of living our lives and it's just really funny it's really cute the only thing I think I gave this three stars like as cute as it was it was a little bit simplistic it was a little bit like lackluster I think that it could have been a bit more witty a bit more fun maybe even a bit more like philosophical and I think it would have been a little bit more hard-hitting this was more just like kind of fun and funny but sometimes I want just a little bit more substance to my little comic strips and I think that this could have maybe had that and she just didn't really do it. So as fun as this was to read, I recommend like picking it up and reading it for fun, but I wouldn't say it's necessarily like full of substance, um, but it's fun. So I gave it three stars, not the worst, not the best, but it was cute. So the next book I read was The Promise You Made and this is by A.J. McDyne. So this one I read and it was a really random read. I hadn't heard anything about this and I think part of the reason why I read this is because I didn't have any credits on my Audible left and I wanted like a thriller and this one was in like the free category. So I was like, you know what, I'm just going to listen to this one. We're, we're going to give it a try. And I looked it up on Goodreads and it has a 3.65 rating which isn't too low so I was like, let's just try it. And this was actually pretty good. It was pretty fun. So this is kind of an interesting book because it has psychological thriller aspects to it. And you're going through the whole book not really knowing what to believe or who to believe. This is basically about a woman who is minding her own business. She's just doing her thing. And one night she gets a knock on her door and it is her goddaughter. So this woman was best friends with this goddaughter's mom. But her mom ended up dying and this goddaughter comes to her door and she's like I need your help I think I killed my boyfriend and she's like I need you to help me like hide the body what do I do I'm like in this horrible situation he was abusing me and I was just it was self-defense and so the this woman is like okay listen I will try my best to help you she wanted to fulfill her promise to her best friend and she helps her goddaughter kind of figure out what to do with this body. You don't really know what to believe or who to believe or what is right or what is wrong or what this woman should do in the entire book and the entire time you're like I don't know what to believe like this woman is in such a difficult situation and that's always so fun when you're reading a book and you're like I don't know what she should do like this woman is in a really hard situation. I ended up giving this book three stars and it's not because it wasn't enjoyable. I was really intrigued through the entire story, really captivated. It was really easy to follow. Um, but I do remember the ending being a little bit lackluster. It was a little bit predictable and it was one of those books that had like very obvious red herrings where you can just see them from a mile away, especially if you've read a lot of thrillers. Um, but it was still an interesting ending and it was still an interesting book. I would definitely recommend listening to it on audio if you have a lot of cleaning or chores to do because I wouldn't say it's one of those books where you have to really 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 pay attention to follow the story. There's not like a massive amount of characters or like this really intricate interwoven thing. It's one of those books that you can really listen to just kind of easily which is why I really liked it. So the next book I want to talk about is this book called The Dollar Get Dream Department Store and this is by Mai Lee and this is translated by Sandy Jusen Lee. So this is a translated novel and I when I saw this book I wanted to read it so bad. So this book is about dreams and it's about this little world that we all have in our consciousness that it exists within our consciousness sort of. It's not really fully explained but everyone kind of has this world but it's like a real world and there's people that work in this real world and this girl in this world <laughs> wants to work at the Dollar Get Dream department store and what this department store does is it sells dreams to the people that fall asleep. So when you fall asleep you go to this department store 
and you buy what dream you are going to have. And some dreams are more expensive, some dreams are more like, you know, scary, sometimes you need to learn lessons from your dreams, but you go to this department store and you pick that dreams out that you want and you don't remember any of this, you know, when you fall asleep and there's different characters that have different jobs in this little world and it's very whimsical. And one thing that you guys don't know about me is I love dreams. It's one of those weird, like, special interests that I have that I have had my whole entire life. Like I have always just had this really strong love of dreams and like how you can like subconsciously dream things and why you subconsciously dream things and the feelings that dreams give. Kind of like that uncanny nostalgic feeling and like where that feeling comes from because you can't get it from anything else other than dreams and it's one of my favorite feelings in the entire world when you wake up from a dream and you have that feeling of like that weird nostalgia that's like slightly uncanny. I love it so much and I have just this really interesting special interest when it comes to dreams. I have dream games that I play with myself, which I've done my whole entire life and it's just something that I really like. Like I love trying to recall dreams, I love trying to analyze my dreams, not based on like what the internet says my dreams mean, but based on like certain things in my dreams that keep popping up in certain moments in my life and like what certain things mean for me personally or what certain people mean in my dreams. Like sometimes I'll have people that will pop up in my dreams that I haven't thought about in ages and I'm like why does this person always pop up in my dreams and what could it possibly mean? Like I literally could talk about dreams with you guys for a really long time and all of my theories that I have about them, but I'm not going to bore you. But that is why I wanted to read this because this author finally dove into something that I absolutely love and that is dreams. And like it's so interesting the way she like constructs this world and like what different dreams mean, like the different levels of the department store, like one level is for pets and like pet dreams and then other dreams are for like expensive dreams and then there's like the clearance floor for all the dreams that like don't get sold and you pay for dreams by the feelings that you get when you wake up. So if you don't have any feelings when you wake up about your dream or you don't remember your dream, then you're not going to have to pay for that dream. There's just so many interesting things in this book and I absolutely loved the concept of this book. It was so much fun. The only thing about this book, so I gave this book four stars. I was hoping that I was gonna give this five and that I was, it was gonna be like a new all-time favorite for me. The only thing about this book is it lacks plot. And I don't like books that lack plot. I'm not one of those vibey readers that just loves a good vibe. Um, I need something that like pushes me along through the story, that gives me a really good clear story arc. I'm a plot driven reader and this just doesn't have a lot of that. It's more of like world building and like explaining how dreams work and like following this girl through her new job at the Dollar Good Dream Department store and that's kind of what this book is. And so I did, I feel like, get a little tiny bit bored by the end at times, but it was still so fun. Like if you feel the same way that I do about dreams and you've always had a really, really like big love and fascination with them, I would recommend this because in that regard it was so fun and there's a second book actually that I do want to read eventually. And can we just talk about this cover? So flippin' cute. I can't get over it. And there's so many things that I tabbed like, so I love this. Dream payments are made with half the emotion customers feel after their dream. So customers who naturally feel more have a higher chance of paying more. That's why it's important to take good care of our regulars. Most of them are rich in emotion. This book is just so fun. It is so, so fun. And if you love whimsical, like this would make an amazing movie. They just would have to like clean up the plot a little bit I think. Sort of like with Alice in Wonderland. Like once they gave that book a bit more of like a plot line, it was amazing. And I feel like this book would make an amazing movie if it was like, maybe Studio Ghibli would be great or like or like a Tim Burton-y type of thing would be really fun as well. Like I would absolutely love that. This book, I gave this four, I think 4.5 stars, I'm pretty sure. It wasn't quite five, but man, did this give me just so much joy because of my obsession with dreams and just how much I think about them. Like, so awesome. I love this. Definitely pick it up if you think you'll have any interest in something like this. It was so cute. Okay, so the next book that I read was We Used to Live Here by Marcus Clywer? Clayware? 
I'm not really sure how to pronounce his name. So I read this book because I was seeing so many people give this book five stars and I was like, I need a really good five star book, right? So I decided to read this one and oh my gosh, I freaking love this. So I gave this book five stars, which I almost didn't. I'm gonna be honest. I almost gave it like a four or 4.5. And the only reason I almost gave it a 4.5 is because the ending wasn't very wrapped up and there was a ton of loose ends. I had so many questions at the end of this book. Like, I just feel like he could have ended it a little bit better and it would have been perfect. You know what I mean? And I don't like open endings and so that was really really hard for me because I absolutely loved the reading process of this book. So I am somebody, and I've said this a lot, I don't get scared when I read. I don't have a ton of emotion when I read to be honest. I don't get overly scared, don't get overly sad, don't get overly angry or anything like that. And so when I do feel heavy emotions when I read it's like a big deal. And this book actually scared me. And I remember when I used to read Goosebumps when I was a little kid and I used to feel so tense when I would read them. That is what this book gave me. It made me feel like I was reading Goosebumps as a child. Like that feeling where you're like, oh my gosh, this is so interesting. And the pacing was amazing. Like this is the type of book that has the perfect pacing for me. It just kept going like everything just kind of kept happening like over and over again not in like this fast way where it's like overwhelming you or anything it's just like there's not a lot of time taken up by description or just like mundane things it, everything kind of happens like very regularly so it's like keeping you turning the pages constantly and it's so interesting you're so curious and you just want to know what's going to happen highly recommend it if you want something that's going to keep you turning the pages if you're in a reading slump this is the book you want to read. So basically this book is about these two women who are, uh, they just bought this house and they're really excited to move in and all of this stuff. But when they move in, like it's probably like the first couple of weeks or the first month that they move into this house, this family comes and they are like, hey, like we used to live here. I used to live here, the husband says. Can I come in and show my family this house? Like I want to show them, you know, where I grew up and all that stuff. And one of the women is home alone and she's like, I really don't want these people to come into my house right now. Like my wife isn't here. And she just has this really strong feeling not to, but she does it anyways. And so these people come in and he's kind of like showing them around and they're really kind of like nice people and they're giving off pretty good vibes. Um, but she can't get them to leave. And they keep making excuses as to why they can't leave. And she's just like, what the heck? Like, these people need to go now. And then, of course, things ensue from there. And, like, weird things start happening. And, like, it's just a really good book. I highly recommend it. It's very, very interesting. I just wish wholeheartedly that he wrapped up some of the loose ends a little bit better in this book. Because there were so many things where I'm like, well, what about this? Or what about that? Or can we learn more about that character? Like, I feel like we just don't really know what happened to them. Like, there was a lot of stuff like that. But this is this author's first book. And I think it started off as like a online story or something. And then he decided to publish it. Um, so it's his first, you know, work of fiction that he has published. But I am so excited to read more books by him because this is my kind of author. Like I can tell his writing is 100% like for me as a reader. Next up is Daughters of the Lake by Wendy Webb. So I read this recently and I was super excited to read this story. And I actually read this when I went to Palm Springs for my friend's 40th birthday. And I, this book was one of those books where you're like, I can understand the merit in parts and for reasons but this just didn't hit the mark for me. So I gave this three stars. This is basically about a woman who starts dreaming about this woman, right? She's having these dreams, like these constant dreams about these this woman, and she almost feels like in her dreams that she is this woman. Like it feels like real life. She feels like she is this woman. She's having all the feelings of this woman. She looks in the mirror and she sees this woman's face. It's almost like she's living this woman's life in her dreams. Well, one morning she wakes up and there's a body that is found in the lake by her house and it is this woman. And she's like, what is going on? Like, I know who this woman is. I see her in my dreams all the time. And so she's trying to figure out like who this woman is, why she's in her dreams. And it's like this very interwoven, like intergenerational type of thing. It jumps from past to present. So you're following the woman 
who died. You're following her story in the past and you're following the present woman's uh, story in the future and how they're like intertwined sort of. Now this is one of those books and this is something that I don't love in books. It's just a personal preference is a lot of family lineage where things get real jumbled real fast and you have to start remembering like how everyone is related to each other and like who's the grandma of this person and who's this person and that person and that person's sister and cousin and brother and blah blah blah, blah. and there's so many different lineages through different families through this entire story that you start to almost feel discombobulated and you can't remember everything because there's just so many characters and so many ties and so many like generations that you're trying to keep track of that's kind of what this book had in it and I don't love that when I read I know some people do and I'm honestly not a huge like historical fiction person either and so this definitely had vibes of that as well so I think for the most part the reason I didn't love this is because it had a lot of elements that I don't normally like in books but there were characters and there were storylines that I was interested in just not enough just not enough it was one of those books where I was like by the end I was just kind of like okay like I just kind of want to like figure out what's going on here and like be done with this book you know like it was just kind of a lot like I felt like I just was reading and 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 it just wasn't ending that's kind of the vibes I got while I was reading this book and I don't want to spoil anything like I really don't want to spoil anything like I was really thinking about whether or not I wanted to talk about spoilers in this because there's things about this book that pissed me off at the end and I don't know if the author wanted you to like a main character in the story or not like them but the thing about this book that just destroyed it was you got to know these characters throughout this whole book and one of the characters just turned out to be a horrible person like horrible but it was almost like she didn't realize that we were going to think they were horrible and so she was still trying to make us like them at the end and I'm like why, why would we be rooting for this person like I don't like they're not a good person <laughs> and it was like it pissed me off because I was like if you just wouldn't have included that one horrible thing that this person did which didn't even need to happen in this book to make this book work like that whole thing about what this person did that was bad didn't need to happen to make this book work and if you would have just left it out like our care and love for this person would have remained and we would have cared so much more about the ending like we would have loved and cared so much deeper about this ending if we didn't hate this character for freaking no reason you know what I mean it was that type of thing where I'm like well you just ruined this book for me because I don't care about this character now like they suck and they didn't have to suck because you didn't have to include that to make this plot work. I couldn't like let that go after I finished this book. Yeah, so I ended up giving this book like a low three. This probably could have ended up being like a 2.5, but I ended up giving it a three because I there was aspects of it that I kind of liked, but it wasn't like enough for me to be like, you should definitely read this. So three stars, meh. So I'm kind of in like my poetry era right now, I'm not gonna lie. I've been really enjoying poetry and just reading different poets and trying to find the good ones because as you guys know I read The Observer's Atlas by McKenna Suman and I absolutely adored it and I was like there's good poetry out there like I found it I just need to find more of it so I've been kind of like searching for it and I, fo I follow quite a few like poets on like TikTok and things like that and one of the poets that I follow on TikTok is Whitney Hansen and I was like I'm liking her poetry that she's posting on TikTok so maybe I'll like her poetry collection and the poems in on her TikTok are her best ones but there is so much filler in this poetry collection that I just was like why now I'm not saying that Whitney is like a bad poet or anything like I said she has some really great ones in here I'm not gonna go on a rant and you guys know how I feel about modern day poetry and how people are using sentences and saying that they're poetry and truly believe that they did something when they didn't and you're just like that's not a poem that's just a sentence that's a sentence that's lazy I hate lazy poetry like I'm in the party who would rather have 20 really 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 well done and well written poems over like 50 poems that are lazy I hate with a freaking passion lazy poetry I think it is an insult to the craft I think it is just a way to fill up pages and I, I hate it it pisses me off there are a lot of good poems in this book 
there are, but there's also a lot of lazy ones and they weren't necessary. They didn't need to be in here. Now the other thing, and this is just a personal preference, is I don't like poetry collections that follow one single theme. I just don't like that. I get bored. Like I feel like when you write this many poems, like this is like a thick poetry collection, and this poetry collection is all about grief. Now don't get me wrong, if you're really grieving and you are having a really hard time getting through the grief, something like this is great because it, it would probably feel very comforting to read um, so many poems on grief to, you know, help you through it. And I get totally get that. But I don't normally like reading poetry of this size with the same theme because I find that it starts to feel extremely cliche, shallow, and repetitive. There's only so many words and so many metaphors and stuff that you can use to explain your grief. And when you have this many poems, like it's going to start feeling repetitive. And don't get me wrong, I think that she has every right to write these poems in grief and things like that. I think she should have just been a little bit more picky on which ones needed to be in here and which ones she wanted to share with the world. Um, and I personally just like poetry collections that have multiple different themes. Like I want poetry about everything while I'm reading a poetry collection. Like I want love, I want poetry about pets and poetry about grief and poetry about your children and poetry about passions and art and this and that and the other thing. Like I just want it all. It just is much more fun for me to read when I'm just reading so many different things. So this definitely has a little bit of modern poetry vibes to it. And if you follow her on TikTok and you've kind of debated on whether or not you want to buy her poetry collection, that's kind of my review of it. Not horrible. Like I did enjoy reading it, I guess for the most part, but there was just a lot of things that kind of irked me about it as well. So last but not least is My Roommate is a Vampire by Jenna Levine. This book was a recent read, the last book that I read before filming this video, and this was cute. This was definitely cute. A great little book for like, you know, this time of year, like the fall time. But it was a little dorky, and it was a little too silly for my taste. Like, there was definitely times where I laughed out loud while reading this because it was just funny, but it was a little bit too unserious that I was just kind of like, okay, like, this is kind of, like, dorky, if that makes sense. Like, I can't explain what I mean by that. Like, I don't know, there was just something, like, really stupid about the, like, love interest vampire guy. Like, he was just so dumb. And there was a reason for him being like that, but at the same time, I'm like, come on, like... You're making him like just dumb, like just stupid. And then like the main character, I just didn't feel like much connection with her. She felt very naive and just kind of like, you know, I don't know. There was just something that was missing between like the connection with them and like their believability as characters. And I just felt like they were just a little bit too silly. And I don't hate like romantic comedies because that's kind of, I feel like what this fell under, but it was just not serious enough. I wanted a little bit more in that regard. And I feel like there's a lot of stuff that should have been explained, like how he became a vampire, why he became a vampire, like, you know, how just the vampire-y things worked in this world. Like, I feel like vampires are different in like every book. And she didn't really explain his vampirism very well in this book. And I wanted that so bad. Like, I had so many questions throughout this story, like, you know, how things were for him. I didn't get it and I wanted to know more. And if you're going to put something like that in here, I just want a little bit of explanation. So uh, this was okay. This was cute. I think I gave this three stars, but it was probably a higher three versus like a lower three. So it could have been like a 3.75. So it's definitely fun. And if you're looking for something fun and lighthearted with vampires, then you could definitely read this. And I will say that the steam was good. Like I really like the steam. Like sometimes steam can be really cringy or like you have zero connection to it or you're just kind of like this is random or I'm not really feeling it or like the characters don't connect really. Like I've read Steam that I don't really like but I really like the Steam in this book. Like I felt like the characters worked and it was like hot and very well written so I would definitely recommend this for that if you're interested in that. So, so that's it you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you guys found some books you want to read or you want to avoid. Let me know if you're going to read any of these books or if I like talked you into maybe picking some of these books up. I'd be very curious to hear your thoughts and I hope you guys have a fabulous day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.